No, we need something. We need something in this country. We're living in turbulent uh, political times. It's a, this is a crazy time politically. By show of hands, how many people here tonight are not seeking the Democratic nomination for President of the United States? <laughs> so nobody. No, it's, it's, it's nuts. They're swarming all over Iowa. They're threatening the food supply. Farmers can't go outside because there's Cory Booker there to explain his plan for a, up, upgrading the infrastructure, you know. And, um, and, and, and so that's the Democrats. And meanwhile, uh, President Trump just launched his re-election campaign, big rally in Orlando. 14 million people <laughs> went to that. Terrific. It was terrific. Uh, so there's a lot of activities on both, both sides of the political spectrum. Big, I'm very looking forward to the to 2020 uh, election, except for one group of people, which is the American public. Um, I'm out there in the American public. I don't live here in Washington. And I don't sense a great deal of excitement about the, uh, what, what the choices are. Here is how I think most Americans view the two major political parties. Like, let's say your car breaks down by the side of the road. The Republicans will drive past you and go, hey, you should have learned to fix that car yourself, learned to maintain it. You'll be better off if you get, can feel, deal with that problem yourself. You'll be fine. Just you know, suck it up and do it. The Democrats will stop, but they will make it worse. <laughs> So those are the choices America sees. <laughs> Ointment or suppository? <laughs> and I say we need a new way. We need a third way. We need a better way. And that's why in a moment I'll, I will pause for your spontaneous applause. But it, as Catherine said, I am running for president of the United States. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you my views. And I, I, hope I don't offend anybody, but I am not a wishy-washy, hold a finger to the wind, take a poll kind of candidate. I tell you what I think, I speak from the heart, I lay it on the line, take it or leave it, okay? I agree with you. <laughs> About everything. If you change your mind, let me know. That's the kind of leadership no, I do, have, I do have some actual views, um, some policies. And Catherine mentioned the first one, the one that got me into it in the first place. I, really, I favor the death penalty if we can find it, this person, whoever's responsible for making us use low-flow toilets in this country. <laughs> Young people don't realize this. We used to have great toilets in this country. We had mighty toilets. We had toilets that could suck down a mature sheep. We didn't do it except at parties, but we had the power. <laughs> and now we have these toilets that save water by making you flush them eight times to get a ping pong ball to go down. <clears throat> well, you're probably wondering, is he going to say anything useful tonight? <laughs> and I am. I, I'm going to conclude. And, and actually, uh, it's, it's a story that I think it's, it's a story of hope. And, and it's, it, we, we talk about how, um, you know, the, the people who argue against libertarianism always say, well, it's, go it's good as far as it goes, but there are certain things, big things, that only government can do. Only government is equipped to handle these certain big tasks that society needs done. So this is my story about that. And this is a true story. Um, in fact, one of the wonderful things about this story is the day it happened, there was a television news crew there to film it, and the film of this TV news broadcast ended up being a legend on the internet. But it's my favorite single example of government taking care of a big problem um, that we shouldn't leave to private enterprise. Uh, and if you don't believe me when I tell you this story, please go to YouTube and look it up, because if anything, I will be under... Uh, representing how bad it was. Anyway, so what happened was the, the problem, the big problem that private enterprise couldn't solve was that a dead whale washed up on a beach in Oregon. Now, some of you are familiar with this story. It's the best story. Um, it really is. The, 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 
the human race should have ended the day this story happened, because we'll, <laughs> we'll never have anything as good as this happen again. Um, so this, there was a, a big storm off the coast of Oregon, and this very large whale, 43 feet long, eight ton whale, washes ashore, gets pushed way up on the beach, dead, and lies there in the sun, starts to rot and stink. So obviously this is a problem too big for private enterprise, so they, they brought in a government agency to handle it. Specifically, they brought in the Oregon State Highway Department, which is called the Oregon State Highway Division. I'm not sure what the thinking was there. I guess a whale is a big thing, and a highway is also a big thing. So <laughs> these people would have the expertise needed. So the TV news broadcast, which is truly wonderful, begins with a man named Paul Lindman, who was then a young television reporter in Portland, standing in front of this huge whale carcass with seagulls walking around on it. And he says, you might say they had a whale of a problem here. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's TV news. And he then introduces the head of the Oregon State Highway Division crew, a serious man in a hard hat, um, to explain what they're going to do. And this guy doesn't come right out and say they've never disposed of a dead whale before, but you begin to suspect that might be the case when he reveals that the solution they've arrived at is to use dynamite. <laughs> and he states that they were not sure how much dynamite might be needed, so they went with half a ton. <laughs> half a ton of dynamite. And sure enough, behind him, they're digging a hole under the whale and putting these big cases of dynamite under this whale. It's a highway crew. I don't know if they followed the full official highway crew procedure and put the orange cones behind the whale. You know, and a guy with a flag, in case another whale comes along, you know. But anyway, the guy explains the plan. Here's the plan. They're going to blow up the whale with the dynamite. The whale will then be in little pieces. These pieces will then be eaten by the seagulls and other marine scavengers. And there you will have it, a textbook whale disposal. So the next scene... They have backed the camera up behind a sand dune about a quarter of a mile from the whale. So they're looking over dune at the whale. They've also backed up the spectators. And there was quite a, quite a few people came out to see this event because let's be honest with ourselves, if you knew that they were blowing up a dead whale anywhere in the District of Columbia tonight, you would not be here. So anyway, so you're looking, over the, you're looking over the dune, it's a peaceful scene. There's the whale, Pacific Ocean, the seagulls walking around. Then you hear a countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then you hear an explosion, <laughs> huge explosion, huge cloud of smoke envelops the whale. You cannot see the whale at all at this point. Then you hear some people cheering, going, yay. <laughs> then you hear a voice go, oh my God. And then a smear appears on the camera lens. <laughs> and then it goes dark. <laughs> because what's happening now is gravity. <laughs> gravity, which apparently no one had informed the Oregon State Highway Division about. Gravity is causing this substance, and I've talked to people who were there that day and said it was the most disgusting thing you ever saw. It was the rotted insides of a dead whale coming down, coming down, all over the place, all over the beach, all over the spectators, and well beyond. And some of these are very big pieces of dead rotting whale, and we know this because the next scene we see is the parking lot where the cameraman has run with everybody else fleeing this goo from hell. And he gets his camera cleaned off enough to get it going again. The first thing you see is a car whose entire roof has been caved in by what looks like a booger the size of a refrigerator. And wouldn't you like to listen in on the phone call to that insurance agent? Uh, you say your car was struck in a parking lot by a whale. Oh, a whale from the sky. And then the camera goes back out onto the beach, and there on the beach where the whale had been is the whale. It's a different shape now, but there's a very large quantity of dead whales still right there on the beach. There's no longer any of on the beach, 
is seagulls. <laughs> Maybe some seagull molecules. But any intact seagulls are on their way to Alaska at this point. So let that be a reminder to you, CEI people. There's a limit to how much you can do with private enterprise. Turn the big jobs over to the government. Thank you very much. If I am elected, you can all be on the Supreme Court. Thank you. Thank you.